The Christ Letters with Enhanced Narration and Text Letter 6.1 You exist within two dimensions. Narrator's Note A special word on formatting. The recorder explains in the foreword that in order to show that some powerful statement had come from Christ's mind into hers, she used italics, emboldening and capitals. Some may find this unconventional formatting interferes with the flow of reading. And this was actually the intention because these letters are not meant to be read, but pondered. This means you have to stop on the specially formatted words and think about what the words are trying to convey to you. You have to reach into the infinite dimension in order to try to understand what you are being told. To honour the recorder's intention, all the emboldened words have a reverb effect added to them, and the words in capitals and italics will also be highlighted with a bell sound, one bell at the start of the phrase and two bells at the end. These sound effects will help to harmonise the recording with the text. I am also reading slowly to allow time to ponder the meaning behind the words. These letters present knowledge which people down the ages have longed to know but have not received since their worldly scientific knowledge was not sufficient to enable them to understand. So was it when I was in Palestine in the person of Jesus. Again and again I explained the truth of universal existence in various ways, but no one understood. As most of you must realize, I have not come to you at this time to bring you a new religion, a better moral code, or a new god to worship. Nor, like your metaphysicians, do I preach positive thinking. Your humanly conceived positive thinking, magnetizing to yourselves your human needs and desires, and the means to fulfill your ambitions, only strengthens your ego drive. All things blessed and bountiful will be manifested in you and your life as and when you realize that the entire universe is transcendent universal consciousness made visible when it takes on material form through the activity of the ego. Your true purpose in your spiritual journey is to break free of the bondage of the ego and make ever more pure contact with divine consciousness. It is your eventual destiny to recognize its omnipresence both within yourself and throughout your daily activities. Your highest spiritual goal is to come to that spiritually exalted moment when you finally realize that your human mind and its desires are only finite and therefore can never bring you the happiness and fulfillment you will experience when you lay down your selfhood and come to divine consciousness asking only for the higher way, more abundant life and the true spiritual purpose which you alone can accomplish in your earthly state. However, to help you reach this high point of realization, I am about to enlarge on the origins and function of the ego. 
As I contemplate your world, I see a dimension presently controlled by ego force. Every evil thing in your present decadent society, in your vast soulless cities, arises out of ego force. It is the source of every wicked, lying, perverted activity presently in operation on your planet. It controls the media, your TV, your families, nations. It is productive of wars all over your globe. It creates a foul miasma of low consciousness energies, perceivable by higher spiritual entities, but too horrible to contemplate. If your present consciousness is permeated with love of possessions and an inability to share with others, devising ways and means to become rich at the expense of others, stealing, failing to perform your work conscientiously or give good value for money, snapping, snarling, indulging in criticism, sarcasm, judgmentalism, rejection, denigration, enmity, intolerance, hatred, jealousy, aggression, violent impulses, thieving, falsehoods, double and devious dealings, slander, you are ego driven. Your ego is in control and you will find it difficult to move through the miasma of ego consciousness to be able to see reality. For this reason I have come through the medium of these letters to help you understand exactly what is binding you down in your present conditions, the horror of which was unimaginable by the human mind a century ago. I am now about to explain more fully the ego. At the time of your conception, during intercourse, as your father's consciousness rose via his spine ever higher to the top of his head and tension mounted towards its climax, your father's consciousness briefly touched divine consciousness, creating a flashpoint, a small explosion which he experienced as orgasm and thereafter an injection of divine consciousness was infused in his semen to give life to the mother's ovum. The moment of union with woman and explosion of tension in a man at the time of orgasm reenacts the time of the Big Bang when the unity of father-mother consciousness exploded into separate energies and the first electrical particles and random matter took form. Father consciousness provided the energy of activity and momentum and mother consciousness provided the bonding to give form and substance to the electrical particles. These are primal impulses which give life and form to man and woman. I want you to understand that creation is not a creation of matter imbued with consciousness. Creation is the visible form of primal impulses drawn and bonded into individual shapes and entities all expressing differing facets and combinations of the primal impulses in a myriad of ways. Therefore the primal impulses are the reality which your eyes, ears, smell, touch tell you are solid matter but are really consciousness impulses individualized in order to be experienced 
intellectually understood and appreciated emotionally. At the time of conception, when semen unites with ovum and a mating takes place, male consciousness chromosomes bond with female consciousness chromosomes. This is a physical union of your father's own consciousness of semen and mother's own consciousness of ovum, powered by the divine. Thus do the male and female consciousness chromosomes carry the imprint of genetic DNA from both parents. The moment of physical union of semen and ovum is conducted on two levels of creativity. The injection of divine consciousness became your soul, embodied within the human consciousness union of semen and ovum. Physicality was created, powered by father-mother-life consciousness, which controlled the activity and bonding of conscious cells producing the gradual growth and development of your physical body, which is really consciousness made visible on every level of your being and nothing else. Your soul remained as an inviolate flame, metaphor of father-mother life, deeply enmeshed within the physical drives of Activity, bonding, repulsion. These became your earthly individuality and personality. Incorporated within the transcendent life impulses of divine father-mother consciousness, these consciousness impulses now took over the process of your physical consciousness creation and became the driving force behind your personality. Together, activity bonding laboured to build conscious cell by conscious cell according to the consciousness specifications contained in the consciousness DNA molecules. Both personality and body are the product of these human impulses of activity, bonding, repulsion. Whilst universal consciousness remains forever within equilibrium in the space and therefore undetectable, in that self-same space in frequencies of vibration, the primal impulses of activity, bonding, rejection work together in the visible dimension, appearing to your senses in the form of electromagnetism. Both universal consciousness and your soul remain undisturbed within the silence and stillness of equilibrium in space. The earthly consciousness creativity takes place within space and time and varying frequencies of vibration of materialized consciousness. Therefore, you take on living form and continue to exist within two dimensions. One dimension is unseen, the divine consciousness, and the other visible dimension is all that the living human being can sense or comprehend until spiritual development lifts its human consciousness frequencies of vibration to the spiritual plane and a glimmer of understanding enters its earthly consciousness. 
As this process of gradual enlightenment proceeds, the uplifted human consciousness then works consciously, both within the unseen and the visible dimension. The higher the frequencies of vibration of individualized consciousness, the higher and more perfect are the forms created in the mind. The lower the frequencies of vibration, the more divorced from universal perfection of love are the forms created in the individualized mind wholly possessed by the ego drive.